Welcome back to another episode of The Canon. I'm your host, Terry, and today I'm going to be reviewing Black Adam. Um, I'm going to do, yeah, it's going to be a spoiler review. I don't do non-spoiler. Um, but usually what I'll do with these uh, movies, uh, hero, superhero movies, I'll do an initial reaction. I'll go see it again, then do a full review. I'm not going to see this again. Now, don't let that throw you off too far. Yes, that does speak to the quality, but also, uh, I do have to say I enjoyed the movie. I really enjoyed the movie. I think for me overall that they tried to do a lot within this movie, and, and this is one of the issues I have uh, with the DCU continuing as we've heard news that you know, they want to do another Superman, might be Superman vs. Blackout, who knows, I doubt it, um, but they want to do more with what we have already, and Black Adam is kind of an, a perfect example of why that doesn't make sense to me, because you have, first of all, you have the JSA, who is not ever established prior, so they just are here with no background, and so I'm just like, okay, even in the trailers, I'm watching it. I'm like, if you take the time in the movie to try to explain all that background, that's going to be kind of clunky, kind of weird. And so they just skip it in the movie. And that is still weird, but it's just, I don't know. Okay, so they're just here. And then you don't, so <laughs> you don't know anything about them or who they come from. We see Amanda Waller, who we know, but then we don't, okay, so where is this connected within our world? Like, who are the JSA? Where do they come from? Do they know anything about the Justice League? Where's Suicide Squad? Like, it's so confusing. And so I, I just, at least to me, I thought, this is why you have to restart. So now they get even more connected. I'm sure you've heard the spoiler review anyway. Superman shows up. So now we got the actual super. So now everything's connected. And it just kind of brings me questions. Like Dr. Fate is at the end. This is last time. Where's he been this whole time? Like it, it, they talk like Dr. Fate was just um, kind of a known person. So it, it really messes up with the world building. And that's why they have to do so much in this movie to me where they have to give you all this background on Black Adam, which, of course, you're going to get. But I do like how they tied into the story. I'll get to that. Um, but they got to give you background on just all this different stuff. So to me, the movie has way too much buildup. And so there's a lot of stuff that I like, but I do not see myself paying money to sit through that again to wait for the scenes that I like. <coughs> And so, uh, and I'm thinking about, well, I'm going to try out this new scale instead of giving it a letter grade and all that. I'm just going to do kind of a, a descriptive scale. And for me, this lands around, uh, we'll watch when it comes out on streaming. Because, or I should say if, well, it will because it's WB, so it'll be on HBO Max and I have that one. So, um, and I say that because I think of those are the movies that, A, I don't want to pay to go see again, but um, also I wouldn't, like, buy it because I don't want to own it. And so it kind of lands into that realm of movies that I want to fast forward through and watch cool scenes. And um, that's it. I don't want to sit through that whole thing again. Because there's a, a beginning part and the middle part is all ramp up. And it just, yeah, I'm not going to see that again. So anyway, that's why this is going to be a full spoiler. Okay, so getting to the the review of the movie and all that stuff. Um, I don't know. There's a lot to say. Where do I want to start? I think in a nutshell, kind of like I said before, there there's a there is a, a great movie in here. We got a pretty fun movie, and I would even dare to say good, even though it's very formulaic, paint-by-numbers predictable, but it's fun, and it might be good depending on how you look at it. 
or how you how it hits you, I should say. But there was a great movie here. I think, especially within the world that's already built, so we don't have to do all that. There is a movie where you cut out a lot of the fat, and you do better with introducing this villain, or you know, uh, build, you know, build it up a little better. But then there's this. Um, this commentary on geopolitical politics or geopolitical, uh, you know, warfare and all that stuff. And there's this great story where you do, uh, wrap up to find that black Adam or Teth Adam is not the champion. And let me just say, I really love this detail because in my mind, I knew, first of all, I, I, it was the hot toys. So I'm getting into hot toys and I might, have to mess around and buy this one now because at first i was like it's just the rock but watching that i think he he was the rock but he really wasn't actually i should say he he was a a a different character and i liked him so i might have to buy that but anyway they had two different suits one was like a more golden so i was like there's going to be a switch in this movie and where something happened where he was dark he's going to go to light and you kind of see it in the movie anyway, because it's like, oh, he's our enemy. Now he's not. Um, so you knew that was going to happen. And then once they did the thing with his son, I'm like, OK, something. I didn't know what, but something's going to be different than the story we saw. So then we find out that his son did become champion. And I thought that it was just going to be the rock. I thought he was going to play him. And then he gives his power to his dad, and his dad is also the rock when he turns into Black Adam. But no, they used a completely different actor who was pretty big and well, you know, he was buff himself, but he looked like an older version of that kid rather than just the rock, which they could have easily did to say, that's my dad, we the same, you know, whatever. I'm just, I love that detail. I love that Ada costume was totally different, but the actor was different. And the rock is actually the version of Teft Adams. So I like that. I really liked how they did that. Um, I appreciate that because it, it was it could have been lazy. But anyway, so I think there was a great movie in here. Like I said, I spent, we spent too much time building it up. The side characters with the kid and everything. It, it Again, it could have worked. And I see the idea behind it. But because they didn't give enough to this idea, this storyline of like occupation and, you know, freedom and all that stuff. Since they didn't really give it the strongest storyline, at the end of the day, the kid and the mom felt like whatever. Now, the uncle was funny. I liked him, but it just kind of felt whatever, especially because it all climaxes to them fighting some some bone zombies that they can easily knock out. And didn't even have to defeat. They just all disappeared. It just, it made no sense. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say it made no sense, but it had no impact. It just like, whatever. Who cares about that? Like, so you leave the movie thinking everything with the son and the mom and all that could have been thrown out. All of that could have been thrown out. You could have did something way more interesting with Black Adam rather than being guided around by a superhero fanatic kid. So there's that. Um, but inside of that, like I said, there are some cool scenes. I think the CGI, for the most part, is not bad. Like I look at, I wouldn't even say not bad. It's not, it's not um, anywhere near as bad as some of these movies in terms of too much. Because you could tell almost everything is CGI. But it's, it doesn't, like, overwhelm and feel kind of like a cartoon or anything. So they, I think they did well for the most part with the CG and all that. And so I think The Rock did a good job in his performance as Black Adam, um, especially as they take the turn to reveal what happened. I think the best part to me, because honestly, Black Adam's powers, I didn't really love it. It was, it was very, uh, I guess, Zack Snyder-ish, like Wonder Woman, Superman kind of did, did that. I feel like there's other movies we've seen, some Marvel stuff where it's a little bit better as far as the CGI fighting. So, and the, you know, electricity is electricity. So, I, I don't know. I didn't love his realization. Now, Dr. Fate, 
that's a different story. I loved what they did with Dr. Fate. Um, I think it could be a little crisper. There's some times where it's a little bit, you know, flimsy, but as far as what they thought about doing, I mean, it's a lot from the comics, but the way it, they brought it to life, I loved it. And I hate Hawkman's helmet, but I love everything else about uh, him and the way Hodge played him. And I loved Adam Smash. I liked how they brought him to life. Didn't love the way they brought Cyclone, Cyclone to life. But for the most part, all that CGI and the fighting and stuff, it was cool to me. It was cool. It was like, it was darn near like watching Injustice, uh, uh, the video game in real life. And so to see those powers come to life is always going to be fun. Look, you get, I don't care about comic accuracy so much, but you get a nice looking uh, costume, uh, uniform. And then you, you know, realize some powers with cool CGI. I, it's going to be fun to, a, you know, to a certain extent. It's not going to save the movie, but it's going to be fun. So I like the way it all looked. And uh, again, I like the performances. Uh, Hodge, Pierce Brosnan, uh, both of the uh, young actors uh, for Cyclone and for Adam Smash. I like their performance. I don't like the what they gave them to do as much, even though they had like the little love story going, which I felt it was so natural. Like nothing felt forced at all. Like you could easily say Adam Smasher was just a flirty dude. <laughs> like he's going to flirt with girls. Like, I mean, because it wasn't like, oh, my God, I'm in love with you. It was just like he was trying to holler at her. And, you know, she was kind of digging him. So but he's so like. I think that's whoever the actress is going to be really good. Hopefully, they give him more because he he just played like that 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 guy that is uh, really genuine, goofy, but also cool at the same time. He didn't come across thirsty or nothing. So I like their interactions, but the rest of what they had doing the movie didn't really you know matter too much. So all of that was good, and I say The Rock is Black Adam. His performance was good too. It's just kind of this brooding, like, really do doesn't know what's going on type person. That was good, too. And then, again, the way they tried to tie this into this whole story of Black or Teft Adam not being the actual hero, that was, uh, I think, ambitious. I don't think they did it perfectly. I don't think they connected the uh, conduct or however they say it, from the past to the present. I don't think they did that perfectly. It could have been done a lot cleaner, but the fact that they tried it, because a lot of this movie is pretty, you know, one, two, three, but they did give us a little bit of uh, 12, 13, 14, and they didn't have to. They could have just went one, two, three all through the movie, and they tried to give us a little twist, a little turn, you know, something to think about. And so I appreciate that. Um now, what I will say, my biggest, I mean, I, I said some of the complaints, but uh, I'm going to say my biggest complaint. I'm sorry. I should say this. Personally, if I don't love that they went full anti-hero, like we knew there was going to be a mutual agreement between the, the two sides to figure something out against the bigger evil. And to be honest, I thought they did well because they never really ever agreed in the, in the end. Like Black Adam was a he was an annoyance to Hawkman the entire way, and you know everybody just kind of was like, "All right, man, be cool, or we gonna have to come get you." And that's pretty much all they said. So um, you know, I thought they did that pretty well without making it too simp simple. They kept the complex relationship together. But I still feel like they leaned real heavy into the anti-hero. Like, watching the trailers again, we knew he was going to turn and help them. But I just, I thought it was, he was going to be more of an uh, antagonist up until that point. And instead, they gave us the classic miscommunication. Um, like, so take BVS, for example, which I know a lot of people don't like, but I love. But even if you don't like it, you have to admit, this wasn't some, oh, I didn't know you weren't bad, Superman. Like, no, Batman was like, I know you're doing good, but all I can see is what you could potentially become. So that's a philosophical difference. That's not a miscommunication. It's just they don't agree. 
in this, it was a miscommunication. Like, he's literally fighting oppressors and people trying to kill other people to protect the people that called him. And he's trying to figure stuff out. And JLA, or, or not JLA, JSA is on his hind parts. Before he could figure anything out, he like, I don't know why y'all fight me, so I'm going to fight you. And, and then it just goes down from there. So I, but that's so cheap. It's so cheap. Because if you remove the slight miscommunication, if they have one conversation with him, he's pretty much a good guy. Like, no, he doesn't feel like he was chosen because he wasn't. And yes, he, I guess, destroyed the whole place because he got mad. I don't know where that came from with Black Adam. But other than that, he's a good guy. Uh, He's a good guy. And so I don't, this was not a sympathetic villain. This was not... I understand what you want to do. And and it was right there. Like, you could have left him a slave. You could have did all that. You could have kept mo- all that story. But then you still could have presented... Um, you needed an incident. But you could have presented him as an actual villain. Because Black Adam is an actual villain. And I know in the comics, uh, you know, it's, it's not black and white. And I'm not saying it needs to be black and white. But I think they went too far. And to be honest, that's The Rock. That's who he is. He's trying to build a brand around this and all that. And I I understand the businessman. I respect all that. But sometimes you need more art. Like, there's so many actors that won't play villains. Or if they play villains, they like, I got to die in the first movie because I don't want to keep doing this. And it's just like, sometimes you need to embrace who the character is and lean into that. Instead of molding it into what you think fits your profile. And so I don't love that. Like, they pretty much made Black Adam a hero. Like, there's nothing. I mean, the whole heroes don't kill is stupid. Because Superman in this world, Batman in this world, Wonder Woman in this world, all of them have killed people. Amanda Waller stay killing people. So you tell me why Black Adam is such a problem. If he's doing good things, but he's killing people along the way. That's all y'all been doing. So I just, I never felt like this was the villain Black Adam. That, you know, there could be a journey towards him being an anti-hero, which is why you really want him to start out with Shazam. So, um, yeah, that's that's it for me. I, I think that covers most of it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of cool stuff I want to watch, mostly with Dr. Fate. Um, I want to watch that again. I really, I do. I want to watch again, but I want to have the ability to skip the parts I don't like because they they drag on for a while. Um, And then, yeah, we know Black or The Rock is pulling in Superman, but let me just say this. I hate the fact that they are trying to skip over Shazam. I am a huge Shazam fan. Um, most of my life, he's been my favorite superhero. Uh, it was Green Lantern, then it was Shazam, and that was it. And so, um, I'm not in love with the movie we got, and I'm not in love with Zach Levi. I like it. Uh, it was better than I thought. I'm not in love with how they did Shazam. But this is absolutely ridiculous. Making this a Black Adam Superman thing is ridiculous. Because at the end of the day, Shazam should be able to take on them both. And so I was hoping to God Shazam would be in that post credit scene and it didn't happen. But I'm still hoping they're going to address that and not just skip over Shazam like he has no business with Superman. Now I get OP, Injustice, Angry, Mind Control Superman, but we talking about just regular Superman, Shazam has hung with him. So I don't like the disrespect, but that's it. All right, so that's it for me. Go down to the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around, get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and if you heard it here, it's official canon.